the sculpture is in the block. And we release that sculpture by taking away all of the pieces that do not belong. It's a race to see who can take a 20-ton block of snow and make the most elaborate and magnificent sculpture out of it in a four-day period of time. <laughs> Winning is nice. It's addictive. We've won all but one time that we've carved. And we always do it for the prestige. Everyone wants to win. Even the ones who say they don't want to win, they would really love to have a medal around their neck. No! Ah! Well, I worry about uh, one of these blocks falling down and hurting one of us. Well, it's called Marco. They're playing Marco Polo. We like to tell a story when we do a piece. You know, if you love books and how they come alive when you read them, this is a little bit about that. I started carving snow 25 odd years ago. We're doing a legend of spirits of the northern lights. The piece is speak to me. If the snow like, permit to me. If done, doesn't permit me. I can find another job. It's harder to find a spot on a snow carving team. If somebody told me 10 years ago, I'd be making sculptures the size of Michelangelo's David, I thought they were crazy. As soon as that sun goes down behind the mountains, it gets cold just like that. This will be the biggest challenge, trying to get a sculpture in the hours that we have while we can work it. Those guys are right on. They're deadly out there. Wow, the watch. It's not easy. Come here with this altitude. Um, there's 30% less oxygen here than, than where we're from. Stuck to my mitt, and my mitt's just clawed up. <laughs> we might have to work all night. We'll go until we're exhausted. Because it is so physically demanding and so emotionally demanding to be there for 18, 20 hours a day, it's a sculpting marathon.